If you're Xi Jinping and you're negotiating with President Trump and there's this overhang of a possible impeachment proceeding, maybe you don't go as far as you would have. You're not negotiating with somebody who you don't know is going to be there in a year. Now that that is likely out of the way, does this open up the possibility for more hardcore real talks between China and the U.S.? I think it helps. You know, I think the Mueller report or actually the Barr report has now increased the duration of the Trump administration. And so you've got uh, more likelihood you're dealing with the same guys in two years. And uh, you've also got more likelihood you'll have the same tax rates in two years. So this is something I would think the market would like, but also the trade talks should go easier. I would like this. If I were Bob uh, Lighthouser or Steve Mnuchin, I'd like this. Because the president really in some ways is the CEO of the U.S. economy. And if you're not going to negotiate with the CEO, if you're not sure that she or he is going to be there in six months, does this, again, open something up, or is there a school of thought where Xi Jinping can simply say, no, not over yet, let's, let's play our cards a little closer to the vest? I think it's halfway between, because we don't know how 2020 will go, and that's not that far away from now for the next election. But I do think that the, the idea that Trump is, not, is, uh, is, is going to be now having more stick, staying power than he did definitely is a, is a help. But, you know, especially with Trump, because... A normal administration, trade talks are done between uh, middle-level people. Trump is calling the shots on this himself. If this were a switch from one normal president to another normal president, this question wouldn't matter very much. It matters yeah, a see, lot with Trump. Okay, you say 2020 is you know, not that far off, but it seems like a long way off for a Chinese economy that is clearly starting to sputter. Absolutely. Absolutely. How much time do they really have? Well, they don't have any, and they also aren't taking any because the central bank has been pumping money like crazy so far this year. And the fact is, both uh, Lighthizer and, and Mnuchin know that China has actually been propping the currency up, not pushing it down. That makes the part of the trade talks about the currency very difficult because there's division on this team. You know, the Peter Navarros uh, have Trump's ear, and they're saying... We're, they're cheating on the currency and all mm -hmm. and the like. But the truth is the foreign investors are pushing the currency down. And uh, that, that's something that's going to get worse the more they stimulate. It's a weapon that the Chinese have. Do you believe there's any chance they use that sort of nuclear currency option? Will they devalue in a significant way the yuan? No, they won't. Because if they did, it would completely choke off capital flows into China. Correct. But capital's capital has already flows, been flowing out. Cap but capital flows are the... The, the weapons they use for reserves for the banks to keep the economy going. That would kill their economy. So they're not going to do that. How does this end up, John? I think it ends up with, uh, with an agreement where they're not going to get, uh, as I was, I was telling the, the team, they're not going to get China to allow you to wander around China checking on them. But we do have boots on the ground. There are thousands of U.S. businessmen in China that can tell you whether their, the trade uh, deal is working or not. So I think we'll have a deal, mm -hmm. and, the, and uh, I think the Chinese will cooperate because the Chinese long-term plan for industrial growth cannot succeed without intellectual property protection. They want it too.